Welcome to another episode of You Can't Make This Shit Up. I'm your host, Joel Hoxley, and your other host, your best host. <laughs> and we are here to Joseph Melendez, a District 43 candidate, and we're going to let him take it from here, unless David wants to say something first. But No, oh, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome, Joseph. We really appreciate you being here with us on You Can't Make This Shit Up, our flagship podcast. And uh, we we and our audience would like to know a little bit more about you, starting off about uh, a little bit about your background and uh, then why you got into the race. Good morning, viewers. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, David. And thank you. Uh, you can't make this shit up. As I said, my name is Joe Melendez. I'm running for the 43rd District of the Florida House. I was raised in our beautiful state of Orlando, Florida, since the age of three. My parents come from Puerto Rico. My dad's over in the area of Ceiba Fajardo. My mom was born in Ponce and raised in Guamo, Puerto Rico. For those who are Puerto Ricanos, yo también soy Puerto Ricano. One of the things about me is I was raised in Azalea Park. I was raised in Rio Pinar and I was raised in Union Park, part of the district. One of the things that led me to run for office is the fact that my parents are pastors. I come from three generations of ministers. We have a heart of service for our community. There was two gentlemen that you met during our time of service to the community, who unfortunately got murdered in our district. Right now, we're seeing a spike in the crime rate. We're seeing how there was a 20-year-old over in Goldenrod that got killed by an ex-boyfriend. There was someone who got stabbed right next to a skating ring in Goldenrod as well. I was raised in your district. I'm knocking on doors, and I'm hearing from our citizens. And one of the, their main concerns is safety. So I hear you on that. That's why I decided to run for office. And a little bit about my background as far as work-wise. I used to be an aide for a representative over in West Orange County. There was a few things that kind of gave me a shock. And that's the fact that we're far behind when it comes to resources for families that have children with disabilities. I was working on a few cases. One that sticks out is a story of a 31-year-old who is out of the system because he's old enough to get out of the system but can't receive the resources that he needs for his autism. As your next state representative, I want to make sure that we're providing those resources for families like yours. And that's why I decided to run. Excellent. That's great. So three generations of serving in the ministry. That's amazing. And you decided to go into politics. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go where the people are. And, uh, if there's uh, anything about... Uh, getting to the people and talking to the people and understanding where they're coming from. Uh, politics would be another alternative than the ministry. Um, as far as your relationship to the community, are you still involved uh, in the ministry um, with your parents? Is there a particular uh, church or, or service that you, you, um, that you have? I'm still active with my parents' church. Okay. And I'm also active with the community. One, I'm so active with the homeless community, making sure that we're providing resources for them. Excellent, excellent. Joel, did you? Okay, so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of know, um, since redistricting, kind of bring me through what your district looks like. What what, what does 43 look like? And, you know, the, the viewers know that they might be a voter for you. District 43 covers the areas of Conway, Azalea Park, Rio Pinar, Union Park, and Lignona. We caught off right in Moss Park Road. Essentially, since redistricting, like Joel mentioned, we have two districts coming together. So if you live in any of those areas, I'm here to represent you. Uh, uh, what else would you, what is the main legislation that you, I mean, you kind of touched on it, but what's the main legislation that you think is desperately needed bringing that up? Since we just had a legislation, legislative session, I'm kind of curious where you would have stood in this session. So one of the things I want to see is I want to see more legislation being pushed in two areas in safety. Mm -hmm. We've made groundbreaking uh, records with laws that affect human trafficking. I want to make sure that we're still providing a fight to end human trafficking. That's number one. The second thing is we need to keep on pushing towards better health care, especially for families that are in desperate need of medical assistance. Thanks, it. In regards to safety, you were, you gave you know different instances of uh, uh, uptick in crime in the district. Uh, 
your relationship with local law enforcement, do you see them playing a greater role in what would you do as far as safety? What would be your first piece of legislation to address this, what seems to be an uptick in violent crime in this area? So I have a good relationship with our police. I went towards the Citizens uh, Police Academy to mm -hmm. learn a little bit more about how our police function. I think one of the unfortunate things is our police officers do not feel backed up. We had an attorney general who unfortunately was throwing people out of the prison system. The cops would arrest them and then essentially they would be released either the same day. State's attorney, Worrell. Worrell. Yes. Unfortunately, we can't have that going on. So police officers, if they feel they're not being backed up, they're not going to want to keep pushing to reduce the crime rate. So one of the things I want to let you know is I want to make sure we're providing better funding, better training, and that we let our police officers know this state representative has your back. This state representative will be ensuring that we work hand in hand with our police officers. That's one of the things as well that I'm not really seeing for my, my head on it. Okay. I do with that. Yeah. I mean, I do who is that thing. I'm taking on Joanna Lopez. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is your opportunity to really have some uh, social media output. Uh, so what would you say demographics are? What, what is the demographics that you're going to have to compete after the time break? What are you looking at? I mean, we got to get those NPAs. You got to have those, you know, the Democrat and the Republican support. You know, what's that demographic look like? So, to your, to your answer, Joel, our demographic is mostly Democrat, NPA, with some Republicans. So, I'm going to be hitting very hard the soft Democrats and NPAs. Of course, I'm going to be hitting the Republicans as well. Republicans, if you're listening, you got to make sure that you got to go vote. And vote Joe Melendez. <laughs> this this particular election, November twenty twenty four, and it it may sound as uh, hyperbole, it, it's the most important election of our time, and uh, we're going to see turnout hopefully uh, be spectacular uh, for the for the middle voters, whether they're independent, Republican, or Democrat, in November. Is there a specific message that you believe will put you across the finish line uh, uh, past your opponent? So to your answer, David, there are three things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's all wrapped up into one, and that's quality of life. Mm -hmm. Ensuring that families like yours have the quality of life that you need and that you deserve. Ensuring that we have better health care, better education as well. And ensuring that we have safety. That way, when you go to sleep at night, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen to your family the next day. You could just go to sleep knowing that in the state legislature, you have someone who's looking for your best interest. And that's me. Yeah. As Joel was saying earlier uh, about the previous legislative session that just ended about a week or so ago, uh, is there any legislation that you'd like to improve upon? Um, and then I have a follow-up question, but that can come after uh, um, a question from Joel. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> to your, so, yes, yes. Your point. One of the things that I think we're not hitting, hitting the nail on just as good is insurance. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm hearing, especially in the Lake Nona area, is they're afraid of their insurance costs constantly going up. I'm seeing a lot of people who, unfortunately, are forced to leave their homes mm -hmm. because they can't pay their insurance costs. They can't pay their rent. They can't pay their mortgage. So we need to tap a little bit more into that, finding ways to find solutions for these families. Okay. All right. You and David Smith will have something good to talk about because he's been dealing specifically with this issue, tackling, uh, simply tackling it little steps at a time because he said that there's no way, there's no big fix right now. So you, you would probably partner well with him if he stays on that committee. 
But uh, I I really just want to know more about Joseph. I, I want to know who Joe is and, and what he brings to uh, our community. Simple, simply put, I'm just a servant. I'm just someone who loves serving. Since I was little, you would hear stories of me uh, with the seniors of our church just taking their wheelchair wherever they needed to go and just serving our community. I've been involved in various different outreaches to the homeless community. There's an organization who I go every Christmas back to school and make sure that they have the resources that they need. So simply put, I'm a servant. I'm just like you. I'm your next door neighbor. I was raised, like I said, in our district. I went to the elementary schools in our district, the middle schools in our district. And just like you, I care about our area. And I love our area. Just a little bit about my background. I've been involved in several different campaigns. Okay. I've been more in the back end, not in the forefront. So this part is is new to me. Oh, yes. Completely different. He's been on the back end of the winning campaign. Oh, I just want to make sure that we're clear. He's been on the back end of winning campaign. That makes a difference. Tough area of uh, Orange County. So no, I, I have to kind of make sure that we say that. I, I agree. I mean, that does make a difference because the difference between winning and losing here in Orange County um, as a Republican um, is impressive. And I was, uh, that, that kind of leads to another question I had, um, your experience um, working with another state representative, uh, what lessons have you learned from that experience that you can apply to this campaign? So one of the things I've learned from my previous boss is always fight for what you believe in. Mm -hmm. Even if you feel that you have to fight alone for what you believe in, always fight for what you believe in. And always like to put people first. That's one of the things I've learned from her and also from my upbringing as well. well. We have a representative government. You just told me that your district is primarily Democrat and then PA. Um, you need a strong turnout with Republicans. And, you know, the question that comes to mind is, as a representative of that district, are there, are you going to be a little bit more moderate or are you going to be tough and get shit done. I think a little bit of both. <laughs> I'm willing I'm willing to come to the table with uh Democrats, independents, and of course Republicans. I just want to make sure that we're getting, like you said, getting stuff done. If that means sitting all at the table, all coming to an agreement, then let's do that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that working in the legislature as an aide taught me is how to work with people who you don't always agree on all the issues with. So that's one of the things I'm bringing also to the table. Excellent. And that kind of leads to the, my follow-up question. Um, seeing that the uh, Republicans had a supermajority in the legislature, they are in the uh, governor's mansion. Um, but this past session, by even some reports by Republicans say that it was kind of lackluster. Granted, it wasn't that much conversation about uh, cultural social issues. Um, they did touch upon certain issues that were important, like health and education. Uh, however, more could have been done. And you mentioned going to Tallahassee and talking and getting more action on property insurance. Um, what more, um, if... If that's one of your priorities, what other priorities do you think uh, you could talk about a little bit more in detail that you'd like to see happen in the next session? So number one, property insurance mm -hmm. as well. But besides property insurance, I want to make sure that we're also giving an opportunity for grandparents to be able to get the custody of their grandparents nice. if they need custody of their grandkids. Okay. Because unfortunately, sometimes we see that parents cannot take custody of their kids. They're either going through a tough time and involved in, in drugs, or unfortunately they're being put in, into prison for X, Y, Z reasons. And grandparents have to step in and become the parents for their children. 
So essentially that's another avenue. There's a lot of things that, as you can tell, that I want to make sure that we're doing for the citizens of our state. That's excellent. Uh, not too many people uh, think about that particular situation, grandparents taking care of children. Uh, I have a, uh, I have experience working in child and family services. And so I, I see your point there and I see that there is a need to, to address there. So that's, that's great. That's really good. That, okay. So here's your gotcha question. Just relax. Just the thing is you can't make this shit up. So what's that one thing that you just, it's so unbelievable. That's just so mind blowing. That you, you in your head say, you can't make this sh up. You know, it, it amazes you that, that it could happen. Like, and I'm going to use a tragedy. The bridge is a, you can't make this up. Like, this is Scott Key Bridge happened in the Francis Scott Key Bridge situation. That's the magnitude. But what is it? What's that you can't make this shit up moment for you? Man, is a God. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I want you to say a question a different way. No, 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 no. It's there. It's like, there's something that drives you. I know there's something that drives you because I've, I've worked with you in the past. I know, you know, how, you know, in, intense you are and in, in how passionate you are. And that's what I want to try to get the audience is that the, they're, Many you can't make this shit up moments for you, and in driving you forward, whether you can articulate them on the spot is different. But uh, think about it. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit more time on the show. They can ask you another question, but I want you to have that moment so you have that. This is what drives me because mm -hmm. I know you're holding that. You second and it's important. We want a really candy moment. Yes, yes, yes. yes. There you go. <laughs> That's why I had to say that Chad is your question question because there is something that drives you and motivates you other than just being all put together, you know. And that's great to be put together, but you are, you relate to the people in your district. They, they, they don't be odd. Mm -hmm. Because you will relate to people, and I believe that truly. Okay, I don't just say that. That's why I'm glad to get you on the show. David, on the other hand, he's very happy. I'm going to push you around a little bit. I'm the one who tough buses, a Republican. Yes. Joseph, there's something about you that drives you, and you need to put everything into it. So there's a you can't make this shit up moment and out there for you. So, David, you can. Well, I, I was going to say, you have a formidable opponent in uh, Representative Lopez, but everything starts over with every election, and um, Republicans delivered. They delivered, and you as a candidate can um, lean on that. However, as far as your conversations with your constituents, what are they telling you? What are those candid moments that you're having with them that makes you know in, in your heart and mind that you're the candidate for 43? And before uh, I answer that that question, my heart goes out to the people who lost family members, who lost friends in this tragedy on the bridge. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm thinking about is uh, I was knocking on somebody's door. And they mentioned that they had to pay like nine thousand dollars rent in an area that's not an area that's known to be rich. Nine thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that person ha had to leave that home. Nine thousand dollars is a lot of money. Oh, that's a lie. For rent. Oh yes, that's that's criminal. I did. Wow, that that's that's penthouse level. Rent, really, in 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 forty three, and it was a middle middle class area. Oh, well, you can't. That's one of those moments right there. Really, I. It, they have to be on the biggest state. That that's that's a lot. Not like is that nine thousand? One was thinking the person might have said nine thousand. Like if go with that, that that uh, maybe. Trying to move out. Maybe. Wow. I mean, yesterday, 
Well, I'm, I'm taking of this. The governor just signed a uh, kind of bill um, to uh, press water. Yes. And yes. Um, it will help you know, move people out. And it may have uh, other effects. I'm kind of looking at the legislation, but mm -hmm. yeah, well, that's a tough one right there. And it's the, that's the thing that passionate that you have is you want to help these people by going up to Tallahassee. Awesome. So, yeah, I just want to get that piece of you to out there so people can see that you're you're part of the community. Mm -hmm. That you're going to have trouble with that R, but you're not the R. You're you're who you are, and you're going to be going against an incumbent, which makes it even more difficult. Now, do you have websites? Do you have things that you want to kind of share with people out, out there? My website is votejoe43.com. That's V-O-T-E, J-O-E, F-O-R, four, symbol four, the symbol three, dot com. Feel free to give me a call at 407-283-3984. Once again, that's 407 Two eight three three nine eight four. If you feel inclined to donate, please do so. We want to make sure that we're fighting for families like yours. But in order to be able to do that, we need funding for our campaign. So please feel free to write a check or donate to Joe Melendez for forty three. Yeah. Is it too early for endorsements, or have you received the endorsements already? I've received several different endorsements. Excellent. I received endorsements from Senator Dennis Batley. Representative Carolina Amnesty. I received an endorsement from J.J. Rodriguez and Christopher Wright, who were the 2022 opponents of my opponent. Okay. I also received endorsements from Hispanic uh, Republican organization. Okay. And there's a few other endorsements. Good. Very good. Well, we want you to know that, you know, we, we appreciate it. Of you coming here and and being put on the hot seat, uh, I really do appreciate it. And uh, like, share, get the message out. If you have means, yeah, uh, you can donate up to a thousand dollars for an entity to a campaign. Just want to kind of put that out there so people know that there are limits in the state of Florida. And like, share, you know, be part of your community and get out there. He needs help knocking doors. He needs help. He needs your help. This is, you can't make this shit up. Yes, and, and again, you can reach Joe on all the major socials. You can email him at joe at vote for, vote for 43com I'm sorry, vote joe for 43com That's joe at vote for joe for 43com He's on Facebook. He's on Instagram, uh, a YouTube channel. There you go. And also at Joe for Florida 43 on X, formerly known as Twitter. So we appreciate it. We're your political innovators. We want to thank you, Joe, for being here on our show. We really appreciate it. And hopefully that uh, this particular interview would uh, get a lot of likes and a lot of views and uh, help you with your campaign. And, and share. Yes, you got to share. If you truly believe what Joe is doing is right and share this so it gets out there. And if you want to comment, if you want to comment, we'll make sure that Joel gets your comments and engages you because, you know, we love the comments. We respond to them. I love responding to them. So please also comment. We love engaging with our community. And guess what? They get off the with that. Yes. <laughs> what they can do for you. First and foremost, thank you once again, David. David and You're Drew. welcome. Thank you for, uh, you can't make this shit up, and our audience as well. One of the things I want you to consider is don't think about, oh, it's a Republican or, oh, it's a Democrat. Think about what can we do for you and what we can do for your family. At the end of the day, the most important thing is you and your family, making sure that the quality of life that you deserve is being taken care of, that we're bringing in money to our district to improve our roads, improve our education, and improve our health care. And I, Joe Melendez, want to make sure that I'm fighting for you. As my slogan goes, my name is Joe Melendez, and I'm working for you. Excellent.